Hey, what is up YouTube? And in today's jailbreak update video, we have a lot to cover. There have been a number of iOS software releases, a new developer jailbreak for iOS 10.2.1, and as of late, Apple has open sourced more of the iOS kernel. As you can see, there have been some major updates in the past few weeks that could vastly impact the future of jailbreaking. Thus, in today's video, we are going to dive deeper into analyzing this information. So, to start off, I'm going to briefly summarize the latest iOS 11 releases that have happened within the past few weeks. These updates add new changes that improve functionality, security, and even add some new features. So, beginning with the first iOS 11 update after it was released. Roughly two weeks ago, on September 26th, Apple released iOS 11.0.1 to the public. Now this update was a very minor one and primarily fixed an email client issue where users were unable to send and receive emails using a Microsoft Exchange client. Proceeding that, just one day later, Apple seeded the first beta of iOS 11.1 to developers on September 27th. While iOS 11.0.1 really didn't add any outward facing changes to the OS, iOS 11.1, when it's released to the public, will in fact add a number of new features and implement a ton of under the hood improvements. With Beta 1 in particular, we saw new faster and improved animations, more emoji suggestions within the predictive keyboard, and new assistive touch options as well. Next up, by no surprise, Apple has stopped signing iOS 10.3.3, meaning it is now impossible to downgrade to any iOS 10 firmware. As of late, the initial iOS 11 firmware has also stopped being signed. Now, just a few days later, Apple releases its second major update to iOS 11, being iOS 11.0.2. .2. Now, this update came as a surprise to me, but some users have been experiencing a crackling issue during phone calls emitting from the earpiece on the iPhone 8, and this minor update is supposed to fix that issue. Shortly later, on October 9th, Apple seeds the second beta of iOS 11.1 to developers, and once again we have received some new features. In particular, it was great to see that Apple has brought back the 3D Touch option to open the multitasking pane and switch between apps easily by 3D touching onto the screen from the left. Furthermore, Apple has added a total of 68 new emojis to the OS within this update, but with all these changes made, the OS still has a rather long build number, which suggests we may see more betas before iOS 11.1 is released to the public. My guess is we will see this software released right around the time the iPhone X is scheduled to launch. Two of the biggest features that iOS 11 was supposed to ship with are peer-to-peer -peer Apple payments and messages in the cloud. Now those have yet to make an appearance in any beta of iOS 11.1 and hopefully we'll see those features soon. Lastly, Apple has released its third public update to iOS 11 being 11.0.3 .3 yesterday on October 11th which fixed a haptic feedback issue for iPhone 7 users. Also before we jump into the jailbreaking news, I just wanted to highlight the fact that none of these updates have fixed any battery life related problems that many users are still experiencing on iOS 11. Hopefully in a future update, Apple will change the control center toggles back to the way they were in iOS 10, effectively turning off the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth services instead of just disconnecting the current connection. Alright, so that was a quick summary of all the new iOS software releases we have received in the past couple of weeks since iOS 11 has come out. But for today's video, we have much more exciting news pertaining to the future of jailbreaking. First and foremost, on October 1st, Apple surprised everyone by open sourcing more information about the iOS kernel. Now every year, Apple typically open sources some of their macOS code, but this year, Apple has released more code about iOS as well. With this information being released, developers will now be able to dive a bit deeper into the fundamentals of how iOS runs and operates. Apple quietly posted the ARM-friendly source code for the X and U kernels used in iOS and macOS, and for anyone interested, the official source code can be found on GitHub. Now with all this being said, Apple did not release the entire source code of iOS, what they released is just the kernel. This means they released the low-level code that governs most of the critical functions found within iOS. This however does not cover the interface, developer frameworks, or apps, that is the parts that truly defined iOS and macOS. 
But from a jailbreaking stance, this could be a very good thing or a very bad thing. Since Apple has publicly shared this, it will likely make it possible for security researchers to discover new bugs and new vulnerabilities, which could potentially then lead to a new jailbreak utility for iOS 11. At the same time, developers may just report these bugs to Apple's bug bounty program instead of creating a jailbreak. Regardless, Apple will find and patch bugs much faster either way. But as well as a jailbreak, developers might be able to use this to create something like an iOS emulator. If developers were able to run iOS on the computer, it would be a much easier process to create and find vulnerabilities and actually successfully pull off a new jailbreak utility. So in summary, there's a lot of potential ways developers could use this information and someone is bound to come along and use it for the purposes of creating a jailbreak. Now onto the most interesting news that has come out in quite a while in my opinion. During this last week, an iOS 10.2.1 developer jailbreak was released guys, it is official, you can actually go out and check it out if you so desire. The semi-untethered jailbreak is officially called Saigon and was created by the developer named Abraham Masri. Now this jailbreak is currently in its infancy and doesn't support many devices. In fact, I've personally only found evidence that it works on the iPhone 6. Secondly, the source code has to be compiled in Xcode and manually loaded onto your iPhone for it to work, meaning there is no IPA file currently. Like I said, it is not for the everyday user, but it is intended for developers. But what is most interesting to me is that it uses Ian Beer's triple fetch exploit. It also uses the Ziva and extra recipe exploits in order to pull this jailbreak off. But if you guys have watched any of my other jailbreak update videos, you know that I've talked about Ian Beer's triple fetch exploit in the past, so I'm happy to see that someone has come along and used it in order to successfully create a new jailbreak. So if you are one of the lucky ones still on iOS 10.2.1, stay tuned as an official release of the jailbreak may be coming soon. But as for now, I would not attempt to download the developer version as it is very buggy and could in fact force you to restore your device. But what's important and very impressive with this is that we are seeing new developers coming to the scene compiling others work to create a new usable jailbreak. But unfortunately for the rest of us, there is really no new official jailbreak information pertaining to iOS 11. Our best hope is that we may see a utility released once iOS 11.1 is released to the public after Apple has fixed all the minor errors with iOS 11 at its launch. I still have hope that we will see a jailbreak for iOS 11 considering the fact that Keen Lab was actually able to create a working jailbreak for iOS 11 beta 2. So we know it is possible and that Apple hasn't patched all of the security flaws found within iOS. If you guys are interested in more information about Keen Lab's iOS 11 Beta 2 jailbreak demo, I will go ahead and link down in the description one of my previous jailbreak update videos, which goes much more in depth about this topic. But since Pangu and Keen Lab have demoed their jailbreaks, we have yet to see or really hear anything from them, and nothing has been released publicly by them. So just as a reminder, there are a ton of fake jailbreaks out there for iOS 11 and even IPAs for iOS 10.2.1 and could be very harmful or jeopardize the security of your device. So be aware of what you are downloading and only pay attention to sources that report on official jailbreak information. As of now, the latest jailbreaks are for iOS 10.2 for 64-bit devices aside from the iPhone 7 iOS 10.1.1 for the iPhone 7, iOS 9.3.5 for 32-bit devices, and iOS 9.3.3 for 64-bit devices. Ideally, I would not update your device to a new software until a jailbreak is released for it in order to ensure you have the best chances to jailbreak. I know at the beginning of this video we were talking about iOS 11 updates, and if you are already on iOS 11 and you are experiencing issues, I would suggest go ahead and update at your leisure, as there really is no information suggested suggesting that one is coming out for the initial release of iOS 11. We may see one here in the future, but as for now, it is really uncertain on when the next jailbreak utility is going to be coming out and for which version of iOS 11 it would be coming out for. Anyway, that just about wraps up today's jailbreak update video. I hope this video was insightful and just gave you a general overview about what's going on within the community currently. I know there's nothing major as of late, but there are a lot of subtle things going on in the background, and as you can see, there are still jailbreak utilities being released, and now that Apple has released the source code of the iOS kernel, hopefully that will lead to a jailbreak for iOS 11 in the near future. 
Anyway, guys, I will keep you updated as new information comes out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe before you head out. But until next time, this is Tony, signing out.